Hello and welcome to hopefully the only video you need to get started in Escape from Tarkov. This guide is aimed for the players that have just started out or are about to make the purchase to try out Escape from Tarkov. A lot of people like to wait until the major patch and the wipe that comes with it to get started. I would highly recommend you jump into it as soon as possible so you can get the head start on the wipe day. When you are first starting out, I highly recommend taking advantage of the offline mode and running around the map with the AI turned off so you can get an idea of the basic layout of the map. Do not worry about learning the layouts of every single building in every single map. Rather, focus on the scenery and landmarks which can help you navigate in a real raid against other people. Because once you can find your way around the map, you need to figure out where your extractions are. Once you spawn into a raid, the time left in your raid and your available extractions are shown on the top right of your screen. This information is also accessible by pressing O. If you press it once, it will show you the time left in a raid. Double tapping O instead will also pull up your current available extractions. The extraction points with the question marks mean that there is a chance that this extraction is open. Usually indicated by a light or a smoke of some sort, the VX is the vehicle extraction, which if available, can only be used by one person or squad. Vehicle extracts also cost money, which you have to be carrying around in your raid. Pressing R in Escape from Tarkov is a default bind to reload your weapon. Your extra magazines or ammunition have to be stored in either your chest rig or your pockets. Otherwise, you need to manually reload your weapon through your backpack, which in a fight situation is not reliable. Speaking of fights, sometimes every millisecond counts. By double tapping R, you can initiate an emergency reload, which will reload your weapon slightly faster, but in return, your magazine will be dropped on the floor, which you can pick up later if you wish to do so. On a side note, by doing a normal reload, but not having the space in your rig or in your pockets, will also drop your magazine. Pressing Alt and T simultaneously will check your magazine to get a general idea on how much ammunition is left in your mag. By carrying extra ammunition, you can top up your magazine during the game by clicking on your ammo and dragging it over the magazine that's not full. If the ammunition count is showed as a question mark, inspecting it with a middle mouse button will give you a general idea on how much ammunition is left in the magazine. Let's talk about movement. Scrolling your middle mouse button changes your walking speed, which also has an effect on how much noise you are making. Pressing C will change your stance from standing to crouching, but if you hold C and then scroll middle mouse button, you can adjust your height more precisely, helping you peek through some cracks which otherwise wouldn't be accessible. Holding down the middle mouse button is also the default bind for free luck, which every player should get accustomed to. While aiming down sights, you can hold your breath by holding down ALT to stop your gun from swaying left to right. If you look at the bottom left of your screen, you can see two color bars. The bottom one represents your stamina, which is drained by you running or from being extremely overweight. The top one represents your arm stamina, which decreases while you are aiming down sights. Lower the ergonomics on a weapon, the faster it will drain. Once it is drained, you will no longer be able to steady your gun by holding breath. Your stance also affects the speed of how fast your arms get tired, standing being the fastest and proning being the slowest. You can go prone by pressing X. I highly recommend you going through your keybinds and checking out all of the possibilities yourself. Each trader has a massive questline you can follow. Before heading into the raid, make sure you have accepted the available tasks. Completing tasks always comes with a reward in the form of XP to level up your PMC and other things such as guns or valuables. If any of the traders has a task available for you, it is indicated by a green check mark in the trader screen. After reaching level 5, you will unlock daily tasks. You will get 3 of them every single day and you have 24 hours to complete them. Weekly tasks are unlocked after reaching level 15. As the name suggests, you have a whole week to complete them. They are much harder than dailies, but also they have a bigger reward on completion. If the task's requirement is that you have to find a certain item in raid, it means that you can only hand in the items you have either found in raid or crafted yourself in the hideout. Otherwise, they can be purchased from the flea market. Thank you for watching the video. I would greatly appreciate it if you could help me out with a subscription and a like. Maybe even press the bell button to get notified about my future uploads. I would love to reach 5,000 subscribers by the end of the year. And you will be doing me a massive favor by subscribing. Thanks again and I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. Here are the basics of the health system in Escape from Tarkov. There are 6 different first aid kits in Escape from Tarkov. Some more basic than others. The AI2 medkit, or more commonly known as Cheese, is the most basic first aid kit in the game since it is only used for healing. On the other hand, the Grizzly Medical Kit is the most advanced one. It can stop heavy bleeds, light bleeds, while also being able to fix your fractured limbs. Light bleeds can also be fixed using bandages, while heavy bleeds can be fixed with a tourniquet or a hemostat.
For fractures, you need a splint. There are two types of splints in Escape from Tarkov. Immobilizing splint, which is a single use, and aluminum splint, which has five uses. If you do not fix the bleed or take too much damage at once at a certain area of your body, that body part will be destroyed or more commonly referred to as zeroed. Only way to restore a zeroed body part is by using a surgical kit. There are currently two surgical kits in Escape from Tarkov. More basic one is the CMS surgical kit, which has five uses, and the more advanced one is the survival surgical kit, which has 15 uses. This can also be used to fix fractures. If your blacked out limb is fractured, then using a survival surgical kit will also fix the limb and the fracture in a single use. Surgical kits restores the limb's health back to 1, meaning you need to use a first aid kit to get it back to full health. Each use will also reduce the max health of a body part for the duration of the raid. If your leg gets destroyed or fractured, you will not be able to run until you either fix them or use a painkiller. Though painkillers are a temporary fix, as you will continue to take damage to the rest of the body while running with a broken leg. If your thorax or head gets zeroed, they cannot be repaired with a surgical kit and will remain zeroed until you either die or leave the raid. You should always have some sort of painkiller with you in a raid as it ignores fractures and other types of pain which can have different types of on-screen effects that will affect your visibility during gameplay. After dying in a raid, your health is going to be restored up to 30%. Therapist also provides you with an option to fully heal yourself for a fee. This is free for players up until they reach level 5. Also note that any healing items in your rig or pockets can be assigned to your hotbar simply by hovering your mouse over the item and pressing the numbers from 4 to 0 on your keyboard. There are way too many different types of rounds for each caliber in Escape from Tarkov. To explain all of it, we would require a whole new video. If you wish to dive into that rabbit hole, I have put a link to ballistics into the description of the video. If you are just trying to figure out which ammunition goes into your gun, you can right click a weapon or a magazine, click link search. This will pull up everything which is applicable to that weapon or magazine. From ammunition to weapon mods, some of the mods and ammunition is locked behind a certain level of a trader or a certain quest which you can complete down the line. If you have extracted or bought the ammunition from one of the traders, you can either load it into the magazine by clicking on the ammunition and dragging it onto the magazine, or right clicking on the magazine and choosing load ammo. There are two types of game modes in Escape from Tarkov. First one is PMC, which is your main character, and the second one is Scav mode. Scavs are the AI which show almost all of the maps in Escape from Tarkov. If you choose to play as a Scav, you will be deployed into an ongoing raid, as opposed to your PMC's raid, which everyone is deployed at the same time. Once you spawn in as a scav, the AI will always be friendly towards you up until you decide to shoot them first. Killing other scavs will decrease your scav reputation, which in return will increase your scav timer, meaning you will not be able to scav as often. Only exception to that is if another player scav is shooting you or your fellow scavengers. If you see AI scavs attacking another scav, that is a good indication that you are free to kill them. Scavs should be used by new players as often as possible as they are a risk-free method of getting gear or even items required for your hideout or task. Note that scavs have different extraction points and using something like map genie is extremely helpful once again when trying to find your way out of the raid. When you are first starting out, you will be met with a lot of items which are blacked out. These items need to be examined which you can do by pressing middle mouse button on them. Any item you have not examined, you cannot use until you do so. For example, if a magazine is not examined, it cannot be reloaded during the raid. To quickly move items from your stash to your PMC, you can hold down Ctrl and left click any item to transfer it into your bag or your rig. Holding down Alt and left clicking a certain piece of gear, like body armor or a weapon, will quickly equip it without having to click and drag it. Both of these tips work in and out of the raid. Stash base is a big issue for everyone in Escape from Tarkov, especially when starting out. If you have multiple instances of same sized backpacks, you can stack them into one. Just drag one inside of the other. You can do so unlimited times. 
Using containers is a great way to save space. From level 1 therapist, you can purchase a lucky scav junk box, which is able to store most of the items you find in Tarkov. It takes up 16 slots of space in your stash, but provides 196 slots of space in return. There are 20 different types of containers. I have made a separate video on how to obtain every single one of them on my channel. If you feel like your stash is getting out of hand and you cannot find anything, you can use auto sort to automatically sort everything in your stash, or you can use the sorting table if you wish to do so manually. Stash space can also be increased through your hideout or by purchasing a more expensive edition of Escape from Tarkov. Keeping your eye on the hydration and energy meters is extremely important because once they reach zero, debuffs will be applied which can be a matter of life and death in Escape from Tarkov. Double clicking or right click and spec on any provision will show the levels of hydration or energy they will restore. Most foods will decrease your hydration while most drinks will increase both hydration and energy levels. To use any of the provisions, simply right click on the item and press use to consume it. Some of the drinks can be used multiple times if you do not wish to drink it all at once. Once you pick out the map you wish to play, you will be brought to the insurance screen. You can choose between Prepper and Therapist for your insurance. Prepper is cheaper, but can take up to 36 hours to return your items, while Therapist is more expensive, but will return the items within 24 hours. Note that even if you insure your gear, you are not guaranteed that your items will be returned to you. If you are killed and someone extracts with your insured items, these items are going to be lost forever. However, if those items are left behind by the time the raid timer has run out, Prepper or Therapist will return these items in their given time frame. The insurance can be collected in the Messages tab. Secure containers are used to store items you do not wish to lose upon your early demise. It's commonly used to bring in keys, meds, or extra ammunition, but can also be used to store valuable items you wish to bring out of the raid, even in the case of your death. Thanks again for watching my friends, I hope it was helpful. If I didn't cover something you were looking for, feel free to ask anything in the comments. I will make sure to answer all of your questions. Thank you again and have a great day my friends.